These are some of the things I use to be a financial minimalist. I don't tend to buy a lot of things, but in this video, I'm gonna share with you 10 things that I do believe that your money is well spent in. So I'm about quality of clothes. Not the brand, not some logo out there. Buy clothes that'll last you a lifetime. Buy clothes that'll last you a long time so you don't have to repeat buying clothes all the time. Buy basic colors, buy things that are interchangeable and I'm gonna wear this as a blazer, I'll wear the pants on another outfit, that kind of thing. You'll be surprised, you don't need a whole ton of clothes. So start to think about streamlining wardrobe with quality clothes over name brands and senseless, useless trends. You should be buying clothes that are timeless and beyond a trend that are good quality that you feel it can be washed. Don't always buy clothes that need to be dry cleaned because guess what? That adds up and it's super expensive. So like I said in previous videos, a white shirt is a white shirt. You can put that together and dress it up in so many different ways. So really be conscious about how you're putting your clothes together. And in the long run, it pays for itself if it's good quality clothing. A good water filter. Now I've said this in previous videos, a lot of us spend an exorbitant amount of money on just water alone and somewhere along the line I guess society community big business or whoever it was decided that we're going to start to bottle water and pay for it I know a whole bunch of people who are absolutely broke that carry around Fiji water because it looks cool and you pay a premium for it but if you think about the water that comes from your tap is just as good now obviously full disclosure I know there's cities like Flint out there or places around the world that don't have great potable water. But think about this. If you filter your water in most places around the world, you're going to be able to save a whole lot of money and become a lot healthier because you have water accessible to you without lugging it back and forth from the grocery store or what have you. So go out there and get a great water filter and spend your money where you can get great returns. One water filter every three to four months is gonna save you a lot of time, energy, and money. I don't mind spending on health insurance, life insurance, and those kind of things. So insurances. Now, obviously, as a man who has five kids, I wanna make sure that they're protected. It doesn't matter what your financial situation is. If you can afford to have health insurance or different insurances that give you a little bit of a leg up in case of emergency. I know there's all type of insurances like AFLAC, if you get injured. So if you have like a job that could cause you an injury, get insurance up the right way. It's money well spent and you never know when unexpected things can pop up. Don't spend a whole lot of money. All you need to do is go online and search out a little bit and get the insurances you need, both medical, life, dental, vision, and all of that. This is kind of a, a different one. Invest in good Wi-Fi. So if you're working at home, if you're downloading things, get good internet service. I know it kind of goes without saying, but spend the premium for, for good internet service and maybe you can cut your cable maybe you can get a streaming service and all of that good internet gotta just go with that i have to have it for business so i splurge a little bit by having the best one i could get my hands on if you can't afford it or don't have the internet then go to places where you can use their wi-fi I tend to splurge a little bit for sure on Audible and on books and on Skillshare. So spend freely on education, but make sure you're utilizing it. I know a lot of friends of mine that'll buy books and they'll never read it. And that's a waste. So if you buy a book, a physical book nowadays, then go ahead and read it and then try to take that book because chances are you'll probably not reread it, won't use it as a reference. And if you do, great. But if you don't, if you read a book and then don't touch that book for years to come, Take that book and give that wisdom or knowledge to someone else, recommend it. Now on Audible, you can go ahead and recommend a book to someone that doesn't have an Audible account. I'm not sponsored by Audible or anybody else for that matter. Go ahead and give them a book or go ahead and you know suggest that they also get Audible. Audible is great and I don't mind spending money when it has to do with my education. Skillshare is another great one, or Udemy, or Teachable, or any one of those platforms that give you the ability to learn on the fly. I do end up splurging a little bit on that. Now, if there's something that I wanna know about, whether it's digital marketing, or programming, or whatever, or operating a camera, I could just go to a short, quick, and 
easy course with minimal effort. So I don't mind spending money on education as well. Before I talk about the next one, go ahead and apply a little bit of liberal pressure on that subscribe button and let that algorithm know that, hey, this content is good. Now, I've talked a little bit about not having a car if you don't need a car. Maintenance alone, very expensive. Down payment, very expensive. Monthly payments, expensive. Insurance, expensive. So if you live and work close by, go ahead and either use the public transportation system that you have. If you live in a major metropolitan area, yeah, you'll have to get up a little bit earlier, but if you have more money to spend, how is that gonna change your lifestyle? If you have a couple of thousand dollars more a month because you don't have a car, How's that gonna add to your travel or your life overall or your investment life? So really think about that. And if you don't wanna take public transportation, if you're close enough, start to bike everywhere. And you don't even have to own a bike. You can rent a bike nowadays on apps. It's healthier for you and you've cut down costs great. So I don't mind spending a little bit of money. I do have a bike. I do bike around a little bit and it helps me stay well in decent shape. Now I'm big on saving a lot of money on eating and drinking. A lot of people are eating and drinking their way into poverty sometimes even and don't understand that ultimately it's a lot healthier of a choice. Go out and spend a little bit of money on a great cooler and great Tupperware and uh, ways to go ahead and meal prep. You might have to buy food in bulk. Now, one of the things that I have to tell you about is don't buy food in bulk unless you're able to use it. It makes no sense for you to get 500 pounds of broccoli when you hate broccoli and don't eat it that often and most of it is going to spoil. So understanding that you really don't have to go to a restaurant and pay for tips and pay for premium meal all the time. You can start to make a lot more food at home and really save the money. So I don't mind spending money on things that are going to get me to plan my meal and to have my meals organized in a way where I'm saving a lot of money and a lot of time. And let's face it, it's a lot healthier for you as well. This one's gonna be hilarious for most people, but I save a lot of money on haircuts. Now, I'm not completely bald, I do have hair, and I've been cutting my own hair for a long time, and you might not agree with my choice of hairstyle, but it's low maintenance, it gets me ready pretty quickly, and I don't have to spend hours on a barber's chair or any of that. And I do have hair, and it's funny, even when I was younger, I cut my own hair. I learned how to do it with two mirrors and some clippers, and it's a skill that I learned while I was in the military cutting other people's hair. But I saved a lot of time and money. And a lot of my friends were paying $25, $30, $40. $40. You know, I know that I have three daughters and they're always learning how to cut and style each other's hair. But think about the amount of money that you spend in not only hair care, but getting your nails done if you're a woman every two weeks, going and getting your hair styled and all of that. Now, I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying be mindful of that. So I don't mind spending spending a little bit of money on my appearance. Lastly, I wanna to talk to you about, you know, if you have a house, if you live in a house, or even an apartment that's gonna give you this luxury, you can save a lot of money on just utilities alone. And I've talked about this, whether it is get a sweater or be able to get a fan and you'll cut down your utilities. But also in line with this is if you can, try to dry your clothes outside. Now, a lot of people are like, what? What are you talking about? Just a generation ago, quite honestly, I remember helping my mom on the clothesline and clothes smell amazing when it's outside. And you also save a whole ton of money. 45 minutes spent waiting for your clothes to dry is the same amount of time you could probably put your clothes out on a line and have them dry and save a whole lot of money. If you can hang them out, even better. So really think about how you're utilizing your money. It's not a conversation about not doing or having without or being a complete miser or Scrooge. It's about saying, hey, let me do things differently. And this is what I talk about in a lot of my content. I talk about the money mindset. You can laugh at some of those things that I've pointed out. You can disagree with them, but ultimately, if your goal is to have more financial resources to invest in, then follow some of that advice. And if you like my content and you agree with it or resonates with you, go ahead and apply pressure on that subscribe button.